Hello, in today's video we got a Subaru Impreza with a check engine light and what feels like a misfire. It doesn't happen the whole time, but you'll hear it and feel it pop randomly, and definitely gets worse when the car is put in drive or reverse. It's happening right now, but not sure the camera will be able to pick it up, but listening to it from the tailpipe will definitely make it noticeable. And each one of those pop pops is a misfire. It's also noticeable if you look inside the tailpipe. It's also noticeable here in the engine bay. You'll notice the idle drops when it misfires. So my first step is to scan the vehicle for the check engine light code, which makes our search a lot easier, telling us that the misfire is solely on one cylinder, cylinder 3. On this Subaru, I know that cylinders 1 and 3 are located on the passenger side, while on the driver's side, we got cylinders 2 and 4, so I want to focus my attention on the passenger side, cylinder 3. Your spark plug wires can also help you find the location of the cylinder you're looking for, since some are actually labeled to which they go to. By the look of these spark plug wires, they look like they've never been replaced, so this will be the first thing I'll be checking, and to do this, I'll need to disconnect the wire at both ends. Starting here at the boot that attaches it to the third spark plug, followed by the end that attaches it to the ignition coil, located up here. To disconnect this wire, you'll want to pull on the boot which has these two ears that you can grab and pull the wire from. It may help to wiggle the wire free or rotate it if it doesn't want to come off. I've replaced the spark plugs a couple months back, so I doubt it has anything to do with the spark plugs being worn, but I'll definitely check them if I have to. Before disconnecting the wire completely, I can check to see if the wire is firing with a spark plug tester. This will also check to make sure that the ignition coil is working, but we know it works since it only misfires randomly. But the thing about ignition coils is, when they're starting to go bad, one of the symptoms is misfiring under load, or misfires happening randomly before completely going out. This spark tester works by grounding out the body of the spark tester to a ground, in this case a bolt, and it will display the spark if the wire and the ignition system is firing, in this case the coil. So with the spark tester connected, let's see if we notice anything obvious. Well based on this, we do know that the ignition coil is sending a spark signal and the wire is transmitting a signal to the spark plug. If we weren't getting any spark, then we'd want to trace the problem back to either the spark plug wire, the coil, wiring, or the computer. But unfortunately, since it's only a random misfire, tests like these won't tell you where the problem is, because they only happen at random moments, not the whole time. So what I want to do next is test the spark plug wire's resistance. To do this, we'll have to remove the other end of the wire attached to the ignition coil. Measuring resistance will tell us the condition of the wire, making sure that we don't have any damage in the wire, or high resistance in the wire causing problems with the spark signal. So using a multimeter, you'll want to get one of the leads and have it make contact with the metal portion of this wire, which can be seen through here. And you'll want to make sure that you keep it attached during the testing of the wire. And with your meter set at 20k resistance, you'll want to grab the other lead and do the same with the other end of the spark plug wire. Most spark plug wires will fall between 3000 and 18000 ohms, but it does depend on the length of the wire. So if you have longer wires, you may want to switch over to a higher reading. But well, based on this, it looks like I'm getting an open signal on this wire, which may indicate a break in the wire. If I connect it to a different spark plug wire, you can see that we're getting about 12,000 ohm reading, which is just about right for a 2 foot wire, so we may have a problem with the other spark plug wire. Well let's remove the wire completely and test it off the car to see if it gives us the same result. If so, we may have found our problem. You may wonder how the wire still works, well if it does have a break in the wire, the spark can still jump the gap and continue the spark, but it can also cause it to intermittently fail like it is here. Now that the spark plug wire is off the guides, we can pull the wire completely out. Well here we got our new spark plug wire and our old spark plug wire for a comparison. Let's see if results change. With our meter set at 20k resistance, we can connect one lead to one end and the other lead to the other. And as you can see, even using this other meter, the result is still the same. Well let's go ahead and try our new spark plug wire. Now let's connect the other lead to the other end. 
if I can get it in that is. You can see that we got a good resistance on our new wire, about 14,000 ohms, which is good for this length. Here you'll see the install of the replacement wire, but I do go ahead and change all the wires. But if you'd like, I'll show that procedure on another video. If you're interested, please let me know in the comments. But I do already have a spark plug replacement video, and that'll be linked at the end of this video or in the description. When it comes to installing the wire on the spark plug, if you can't hear or feel an obvious click, which is hard to do on these, I always give it a slight pull to make sure that it clicked and doesn't slide out. Now we just install the wire into the guides. Followed by clicking it back onto the ignition coil. And finally, we can start the car and see if it fixed our problem. And that's definitely music to one's ears. Well, I hope you found this video helpful and informative. If so, please click that thumbs up button to support my video and my channel. And please subscribe if you haven't done so.